Ladies and gentlemen, it is a big, weird, wild world out there, folks. And here we stand. Al Pied del Canyon. <laughs> you know what? I can't even remember the introduction for the show, Natch. I'm Rob. That's the Natch. And you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> Jeez Louise, friends. This is what happens after a, after a weekend, Natch. I come in, I come in rusty, oxidado. <laughs> How are you doing out there, folks? You're listening to the Probo Show, taking you, um, if you're lucky enough to be listening to this live, taking you from 8.30 to 9.30 Central European time. Uh, big good morning to those of you joining me live on the stream as well. Um, if you want to do that and interact, contribute to the show's content today, you can do that at twitch.tv barra professional bohemian. Right now we've got Pedro, we've got The Bridge, we've got Born to Iron Man. Good morning, Probo Showers. Um, have you enjoyed your weekend? Oh, Born to Iron Man, I enjoyed my weekend. In its, um, uh, in, its, in its nature, the weekend is enjoyable, right? I mean, you know, you're not at work. <laughs> it's like, isn't that the best time? Um, how was your weekend, Natch? Really good. Uh, I went out on Saturday with a couple of friends and it was very nice. Did you get drunk? That's a yes, question. Yes, a little bit. Yeah, good. <laughs> Me too. Dude, I have, to start, I have to lay off the alcohol for a while. We'll get into that in a second. Very very quickly, I want, to, um, I want to let you know what's coming up in today's show. Well, obviously, as every morning, I asked 100 humans um, about allergies. Allergias, about allergies. Um, then in complete the news today, we're going to go to Arizona man and find uh, to an Arizona gentleman and find out what he was doing um, in a fountain. <laughs> and of course, we go to Florida as well, and um, we talk about a Taylor Swift concert if we have time. If we have time. And today's unpopular opinion is a juicy one, guys, and very unpopular according to Instagram. Today's unpopular opinion is there is never a good excuse. Oh, no, wait, we've done that one. <laughs> that was Fridays, my friend. Um, just be yourself is bad advice. Just be yourself. You're nervous? Just be yourself. It's bad advice. Um, uh, yeah, and very, proved to be very unpopular. But before all that, friends, I'm here, you're here. You know, let's just settle down a second. Let's just catch up. How was the weekend? Natch got drunk. I got drunk, Natch. Saturday, we, I met up with some friends. I met up with Mam and Rivera. Dude, we're really great to see Mam and Rivera. Um, Alberto, Kyle, El Pajaro, Tino. Dude, Tino's got a black eye, man. Yeah, <laughs> he opened a door into his face. What you got to understand about Tino, friends, is he's a he's a man. He's a he's a magnet for for misfortune. <laughs> and I was about and I, and he and he came with this black eye, and I thought to myself, "Oh man, Tino, oh Tino." And then I looked back over my own six months <laughs> and thought, you have got no right to talk. <laughs> Given that I, you know, I've gone from everything from being cheated on, leaving my house to breaking six ribs. <laughs> so I'm not going to open my mouth against anyone who's suffering bad luck. <laughs> um, but it was really nice, man. It was really nice. The, the night, Natch, we met at 3 p.m., and I was, and we were still partying until only two of us towards the end, till three a.m. She's Louise, man. And then the next day, I woke up so bad, and I had lunch plans the next day. I had lunch plans the next day in El Matadero. I never. Are you familiar with the southern part of Madrid, Natch? I've gone, but no, very familiar. Yeah, no, me neither. Me neither. And it's beautiful down there. With the Rio, the Madrid Rio and everything. Oh, my God. Guys, if you ever come to Madrid, head down to the south. El Matadero. It's a beautiful area. Tried for the first time in my life, Natch, um, ceviche. It was good. It was real good. <laughs> Spanish sushi. I don't know what the hell it is. It was good, though. It was good. <laughs> um, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Good morning, Rob, says the bridge. Uh, Pedro's driving. He says, good morning. Um, Rob, se te lengua la traba? Traba lenguas, um, uh, a tongue twister, we say. Yeah, dude, the introduction. I'll get it right tomorrow. We've got plenty of more uh, <laughs> opportunities. Um, so, yeah, that was my weekend. Then, yeah, I went for lunch. But, dude, you know, the hangover ruined lunch. You know when you kind of sat there and you can feel a bead of sweat rolling down your head and you've got a headache and you're just trying your hardest 
to strap a smile on your face and present the best version of yourself. But all you want to do is nap. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, I'm too I'm too old to be drinking. I'm gonna go dry again for at least for a, for a month. That's my promise to you, Natch. Robbie's gonna go dry for a month. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so let's um, uh, let's take a look um, at some news, guys. I'm here, you're here. Why not? Let's look at what's going on in the world. Natch, I'm in possession of the most Spanish piece of news you've ever heard. It is the most Spanish piece of news. This is from the Guardian. A Spanish firm. Um, uh, were in the court of law were proved wrong to fire an electrician for drinking alcohol during his working day. A court ruled that, Natch. There is legal precedent. So if you want to go out during lunch, drink a few cañas, come back. <laughs> There's nothing anyone can do while we're talking about alcohol. It's true. Spanish firm wrong to fire an electrician for drinking alcohol during the workday, a court rules. A high court found um, an electrical company had not proved the man was drunk after he was seen drinking beer, wine, and brandy at lunch. (laughs) Viva España! (laughs) Ole! A Spanish court has ruled that a company was wrong to fire an electrician who have, may have drunk more than three litres of beer in one day because it had not proved that his consumption had left him inebri- inebriated, intoxicated or drunk and unable to do his job. It is a very Spanish thing, that though, right? Yeah, let's just let's just go down. You know, we'll go down for lunch. We'll have lunch. Well, I, well you know, I'll have a wine, a glass of wine, a glass of wine. Well, we, you know, I'll have another one. I haven't finished. You know, and then you have three. Dude, I went, when Richard Vaughn was still in the office every day, we ever went for lunch. I, I never went for lunch with Richard and didn't come back. A little bit. <laughs> Piripi. Do you know what I mean? Piripi means tipsy, by the way, for my um, English uh, English listeners. Morning, Rob. I'm pretty sure we did just be yourself last week. Um, no, no, no. Um, just be yourself is terrible advice is this week. Last week we did um, we did similar topics. This topic was supposed to be in last week. We didn't do just be yourself last week, right, Natch? I don't think so. I don't think so. Natch is just thinking to himself, how do I pretend to Rob that I pay attention to what he does every day? And you know what, Natch? I want to live in that illusion too. <laughs> so you just nod and agree, man. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I've never known you to be a, a lunchtime alcohol imbiber, Natch. In uncharacteristic um, among my Spanish friends. Well, saying that, saying that, like Fitz, <laughs> Fitz is is one to have a couple of beers with lunch. Okay, let's um, let's continue. Wow, I've got some good news. Yes, just be yourself. Oh, we did do it. Well, we're going to do it again, friends. We're going to do it again. Um. Okay. Um. Let's see. I, 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 a piece of misinformation. And I jumped on the bandwagon and reported some rule, some news last week that was inaccurate. Remember last week, Natch, I said um, chat uh, or uh, an AI, chat GPT AI, learned, um, learned autonomously. It, on its own, it learned how to speak a language. Yeah, that didn't happen. That um, piece of misinformation that has made the rounds across so many um, news outlets came from um, 60 Minutes. Yeah, apparently the language model that was le- was speaking that language had been trained to do so. See what I mean about this misinformation about AI? It's so easy to be, you know, to, um, to fall into the trap of these scare tactics. You know, we could all be scared all the time if we wanted to be. But it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. You know what I mean? Look at look at in the past. AI will cause a big disruption. I'm sure if you would have asked people in the 80s, you know, what jobs will be created by or, or for the most part subsidized by activities on the internet, you would have thought, I don't know, impossible. You know, it would have been impossible to project yourself into the future and think SEO specialist, online marketing specialist, influencer. <laughs> <laughs> and today, like, wow, how much of our economy is made up by activity on the internet? So much of it. A, a massive percentage. 
And that's what's going to happen with AI folks. You know, that's what's, they, they, we'll just see some new industries cropping up. We'll lose some jobs and other jobs will be created. That's my, um, uh, <laughs> that's my thought on the matter anyway. Um, and then I'm going to go to, um, uh, and then after that, now let's go to um, some news from El País, the English version. Um, interesting news, a wave of lawsuits. I like that. Una ola, they're lawsuits. A wave of lawsuits. Hey, what? Thank you, Natch. Oh, he is paying it. See, he pays attention sometimes. Thank you, Natch. The first of the day, first of the week. Um, a wave of lawsuits that could kill social networks. Large platforms save, um, face several legal challenges in the United States, accusing them of knowingly harming the mental health of young people. Social networks are facing a colossal cliff in the U.S. Their business model has been singled out by a tsunami of lawsuits from individuals, educational institutions, and public prosecutors. Uh, this is, um, I think this is on the back of a lawsuit in Utah where a 16-year-old girl, thanks to Instagram, or because of Instagram, developed um, bulimia and anorexia um, and became... Well, basically became obsessed with her own body, right? I mean, we actually have a mutual friend, Natch, who's living through something similar to this. How much of this do you blame on social media, Natch? How much of this do you blame on just humans? You know what I mean? Is it improper education about social media or is it social media in its essence? It's difficult to say, right? It's difficult to say because I know we have a, a bunch of people in the chat who um, uh, who just value so highly our freedom of speech is, is, you know, and quite right too. We will do um, an unpopular opinion on freedom of speech. But freedom of speech also implies, you know, some some kind of um, moral guide, some some gatekeeping. But in the nature of these, of uh, particularly Instagram, we're not encouraged to post normal life situations. Sat on the bathroom, mopping your floor, like you know, we're, we're posting, we're cherry picking the most beautiful moments of our lives and sharing that, and giving people just a bad impression of their own lives in in comparison, and um, and the lives of other people. Why can't I be that beautiful? Why can't I have a life that's that interesting? You know. Bridge says, with a twist, now it shall be you must be yourself. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. I didn't realize I'd done that one last week. My bad. My bad. Um, so, yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in the future and what this could do to um, to social networks. Because certainly there has to be some changes, right? Whereas, you know, there is some sort of, uh, there is some sort of blame to be assigned to parents and educational institutions for not highlighting the fact that what you see on social net social media is not real it's a version of the truth you know but not the whole truth um although there is some onus on parents and and educational institutions and the media to be a to send a lot more of an efficient message with regards to um uh, to the kind of messages we receive on social media surely so surely the majority of the blame lands on them i just don't see a path i don't see how social media can pivot you know i don't see how social media can um can maintain their business model without um without that activity i'd be interested in, in your opinions guys it is um it is a hot topic it is an interesting one it's an interesting one um at what age will you let baby natch have their own social media accounts hmm Cuanto más tarde mejor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I don't haven't thought about it, but maybe 15, 16. 16. That, I, that, that's what I want, what I w would want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'll be hard to know, you know, whether they've got them or not. Um, is there a social media or is there a particular social media account, um, company or platform that you find less or more appropriate for younger people than others? I'm not an expert. We, I, I have no idea about TikTok, for example, or Snapchat. Yeah. I have no clue. I, I, during those hearings, the TikTok um, CEO said that if you were an eight-year-old, 
<laughs> using the platform. You would experience the platform in a completely different way. Yeah. I don't know how much truth there is to that. But it's interesting, right? It's interesting. How are you doing, Min? Good morning. How are you doing, my friend? Um, joining us all the way from the Netherlands. Uh, the Bridge says, I still think we all need to learn the correct way to use social media. What's the correct way to use social media? Is it a correct the correct things to post or the correct mindset when you're filtering posts like it here's the thing about the modern world when i when i was when i was young before i became grandpa rob <laughs> or tito rob as um, as our receptionist calls me before i became uncle rob um yeah i don't know this is a it's a complex issue yeah, what's the correct way to use it? I think the correct way to use it is just maintain normal use, but educate people on the, uh, yeah, on the, on how false social media, the, how how life is um, distorted through social media, through the lens of social media. But because let's face it, like this, going back to this example of this sixteen-year-old girl in Utah, we were reading the same stories in the nineties, but instead of about social media influencers. We were reading it about models in advertisements and on magazines, right? And how do we get over that hump? Well, just education, um, a certain amount of um, uh, of public messaging around body positivity. Um, no, understand it and its influence, says the bridge. Yeah, I understand how it works. Yeah, yeah. And sadly, there is so li- little information out there. It's like information that's in the hands of a, of a few, but should be in the hands of the many. I mean, what, one, the, the fundamental thing to understand about social media is that every platform wants to keep you on that platform. What do I mean by that? So if you're a small business and you're posting links to your website, understand that it's not in Facebook's interest to have people leave Facebook and go to your website. Number one. <laughs> Number two, understand that people um, uh, people don't post the truth on Instagram. They just post, um, they post. You know, it's like 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 having someone take a photo from your best side. You know, this is my best side. Take a photo from that angle. You know, it's not real. It doesn't present the truth. Just one kind of tiny aspect of the truth. Uh, Pedro says, I believe what we experience today is social media as some sort of wild, unregulated environment where the only purpose of the algorithm is to algorithm is to keep you on it all the time um, will not be prevailing model in the future. There will be more regulation and more censorship. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, I'm not sure the the way to solve a problem is to hide the problem. I think education and technology is how we as as humans have tended to most successfully ever ever solve an issue. You know? Um I don't you know when we st- when we get into banning and prohibiting and you know it's difficult it's difficult I'm torn on this myself. We will do um we'll do a, f- a free speech on popular opinion maybe even tomorrow let's see. Let's see. While we're talking about unpopular opinions, let's go there right now. Unpopular opinion. All right. Apparently, this is a repeat, Natch. I had no idea. It's a repeated unpopular opinion. But we're going to do it anyway. It's a good one. Today's unpopular opinion is just be yourself is ter- is um, is terrible advice. It's bad advice. I'm sure we did a different one last week. I'm going to check it out over the break. <laughs> And then I'll come back and I'll apologize because you're all right and I'm wrong. <laughs> so just be yourself is terrible advice. I did get um, quite a few messages w- with regards to this. Let's um, let's go and take a quick um, read. Vanessa reached out. Um, she says, I truly believe that we have five minutes here. Let's enjoy them. We have n- nothing else to do. Being miserable doesn't help anyone. Hang on, wait, hang on. Ah, hang on. No, no, no. The unpopular opinion, Natch, god damn it, was um, uh, do what you need to do to be happy or be happy. <laughs> do what makes you happy is terrible advice. <laughs> oh my god, Natch. Yeah, what what am I doing with my life, Natch? What am I doing with my life? Do what makes you happy is terrible advice. My bad, my bad. 
See, Pedro was right all along. Um, do what makes you happy is bad advice. Um, 72% of people on Instagram, Natch, said that's false. So that's not a good, um, that's not a fair representation, Rob. Um, that's not um, uh, that's not accurate. What do you think, Natch? Do what makes you happy good advice. I agree with the, with the, with the guys. Yeah. yeah. What is it in its nature of just do what makes you happy? That is good for you. What? What? Tell me what it is in that statement that you think. Okay, well that that can't be false. Well, it's better to do what you what do what you want than what you don't. Even though I I assume that you are going to get tired of both. <laughs> Even though, <laughs> yeah, at the end you work in something you love. You are not going to to love it so much. But yeah, yeah. you're not going to. Okay, here's, here's my point. We are too dumb to know what makes us happy, Natch. We as human beings are too dumb to know what makes us happy. And we we can't properly define in our own minds. And thank you guys for letting me know. Yeah, do what makes you happy. That's today's unpopular opinion. We are too we are too dumb to identify between in our own criteria to identify between what makes you happy short term versus long term. Eating cookies makes me happy, Natch. Eating cookies, drinking limitless alcohol makes me really happy. Makes me a happy man. But in the long term, you know, when I've gained a lot of weight and I'm super unhealthy, I'm unhappy because of my short-term happiness. Do what makes you happy is not good advice. Let's go over some pros and cons that the um, elves prepared for me today. Um, Short-term versus long-term happiness. um, Pursuing immediate gratification can lead to neglecting long-term goals or responsibilities. The pursuit of personal happiness might lead to selfish behavior, negatively impacting others or creating ethical dilemmas. Uh, Doing what makes us happy in the moment might encourage indulgence in unhealthy habits or dependencies that can have negative consequences on physical and mental well-being. And unrealistic expectations. Constantly chasing happiness can create unrealistic expectations, leading to disappointment and dissatisfaction when life inevitably presents challenges. I'm going to repeat that. Constantly chasing happiness leads to disappointment and dissatisfaction when life inevitably presents challenges. After after those four arguments, Natch, are you at all swayed? Do what makes you happy is bad advice. No, I think the same. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I'll continue. Okay, so these are some arguments you may agree with then, Natch. The elves prepared these this morning. Prioritizing happiness can lead to a more fulfilling life. God, I sound like an Instagram post. Um, uh, focusing on activities that bring joy can reduce stress and improve mental health. Um, engaging in activities that make us happy can boost motivation and productivity and the advice do what makes you happy can promote a healthier work life balance okay let's see what people are saying in the chat um the good part is that societal expectations are bs uh crap um says min if you are happy doing something else and you should do that and not get stuck in other people's expectations. Um, Bridge says, it's good advice. We don't know what makes us happy until the long term. Pedro says, I think the catch here is that the concept of what makes you happy, if that means a momentary joy, then it's bad advice. If happiness is a mere profound meaning, then the advice is right. But it's not easy to identify what paths you're coming across and will lead you to happiness. Okay, here's the thing. Personal happiness does not equate to what is best for your for your social group and not even for yourself in um, the va- vast majority of occasions you know um watching reality tv makes me happy is it a productive use of my time natch is it a productive use of my no it's not not a productive use of my time drink it going out drinking until 3 a.m every night dude makes me happy natch is that a productive use of my time do what makes you happy is just a part of this pop psychology nonsense that people are asking you or, or, or convincing you that to put your own needs and your own instant grat- gratification 
above long-term societal or collective benefit. Quite often, the correct course of action is not to do what's best for you, but to do what's best for the collective, whether the collective is you and your partner, or the collective is you and a group of friends, or the collective is you and a group of work colleagues. We're going to get into this after the break, because I do take issue with this, and sorry about the mix-up there, guys. Yeah, do what makes you happy. I'm going to ask you to vote, and then I'll come back and I'll argue with you some more. (laughs) Um, let's very quickly see what people um, are saying. Chusky, searching for happiness is not good. Enjoying good moments is the wise option. Mm. Min has a lot of good opinions. The bridge is chipping in in the chat. Guys, so many things you could have been doing today. Instead of doing those things, you're here with me, and it means the world. I'll be back in a few minutes. Hey, guys. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind-the-scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian, and you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P-R-O-B-O-H. Okay, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. If you just tuned in, what? Have you missed? Well, you missed me screw up what today's unpopular opinion was. <laughs> um, but we also spoke about um, about a Spanish firm um, proven wrong for firing an electrician for drinking alcohol. Viva España, Natch. <laughs> um, we spoke briefly about the wave of lawsuits that could change the face of social media. Again, all these links, guys, I will post in my Patreon for those of you who want to um, catch up with the news yourselves. And then we corrected a news story um, that was incorrect. I wasn't the only person to give this piece of news, but I am one of the few that's correcting it. With regards to chat GPT learning a language autonomously, it did not. It did not. It was um, a mistake. Due to um, a wrong claim made by the TV show 60 Minutes in the States. And then we moved on to today's unpopular opinion, which was just be yourself is bad advice. If you're joining us live in the show, you can still vote. The vote is still live for a few more seconds. It's about to finish. Here it goes. Yeah, it's done. All right. Let's get a drum roll match. We'll, we'll, we'll do the poll. False. 67%. People say, no, do what makes you happy is good advice. Oh, my sweet summer children. First, before I give you my um, my opinion on this. So 67% now. Only you and everybody listening to the show, those are the only people I have to argue with today. <laughs> um, Min says, the arguments against assume short-term satisfaction with a... Um, with a person incapable of looking into themselves and making choices between, based on their inner wants. It paints people as being unable to make choices. Yes, it does, mean, And I, yes, I am making that assumption. Because most people find it difficult to make. Look, we make good choices when we have all the information. Okay? Um, if, you, if you have a special diet... You're not going to be able to create a meal for yourself unless you know the ingredients in each each of the ingredients you use to prepare the meal. That makes sense, right? We need all the information in order to make great choices. What makes us happy immediately does not necessarily lean or, or, or indicate long-term happiness. Immediate happiness and long-term happiness can quite often be two con- um, contradicting things. And yeah, and I feel like people make bad choices, or I'm assuming here that people make bad choices, not because I think people are stupid. I just don't think we can't look into the future. <laughs> we don't have all the information. I mean, here, happiness is a funny subject. I mean, if you were to look at the psychological research... There is very little difference between the happiness of lottery winners and um, your average person. After a year, our happiness stabilizes around the same same point. 
You know, we very quickly get used to things and situations. I mean, do what makes you happy. You don't see, you don't see, um, ardias. You don't see squirrels like running around for self-help courses. You know what I mean? They don't have to be happy. They can just be. Do what makes you happy. I feel like is um, maybe not bad advice. It's just very kind of naive advice in my mind. And yes, I am assuming that people make poor decisions because people do make poor decisions. I make poor decisions. We all make poor decisions. Bridge says, it's good advice. We don't know what makes us happy until the long term. Uh, Pedro says, I think the catch here is the concept of ha- what makes you happy. If that means momentary joy, then it's bad advice. Yeah. Searching for happiness is chusky. Enjoying the good moments is the wise option. Um, the bridge. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Chusky says, here we go. This is a good one. People are obsessed with searching for happiness. And all the obsession is negative. It's, a, it's good advice, but people are too dumb to get the point. Oh, can we get a probo approved? Robo approved. Yeah, we are all too dumb. You know, I'm the first person to kind of lean into my more hedonistic urges. And it, uh, I don't feel any less dumb. I don't feel satisfied, you know? Impulse purchases. Will, buy, will buying that, that 600 euro handbag make you happy? <laughs> will eating that hamburger make you happy? Yeah, it'll make me happy, Natch. Do what makes you happy, Rob. All right. Burger King for life. You know? Do what makes you happy. It's just short-sighted. Why not um, Why not say instead, you know, plan for the future? <laughs> you know? Um, uh, do what makes you happy. Like, or for, for example, Coco sent an interesting message. She says, can we add to the end of that as long as it doesn't hurt other people? Dude, anything you do is going to hurt someone. There, it's impossible to kind of deliver an action that is a net positive to you without it being a net positive to someone else. A net negative to someone else. Let's continue. I think most people agree that being in good health and being amongst loved ones brings happiness. But there's a long time... Oh, let's see. But there's a long time happiness that comes from your job and the impact you make on the world. I don't think it's fair to paint them all the same. People who are overweight can still enjoy being with their loved ones and still have their dream job. Yeah, but our happiness is so fragile. Let's get Min um, a Probo approved there, because it is a very good one. Probo approved. And I'm just here to argue. I'm grumpy this morning. I haven't, didn't sleep very well last night. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Do what makes you happy, though. Is not, um, it is an incomplete piece of advice. And most of us, what makes us happy, we're all hedonistic individuals. All of us. What makes us happy, we always focus on the short term. Like, like when you get given that piece of advice, look, I'm feeling down today. Well, what will make you happy? You know, what makes me happy is to go home, go back to bed <laughs> and take a month off. My, my, my company wouldn't enjoy that. They may fire me. Uh, Pedro, usually the path towards happiness is not obvious to us and it tends to be the hard way, which does not bring much joy. Oh, get Pedro uh, Probo approved. Probo approved. Usually, the path towards happiness is not obvious to us and tends to be the hard way which does not bring joy. But I suppose we do not have, um, we do have instincts that can help us make such distinction. We know when we're just indulging into something that appears to make us happy but does not induce happiness in the long run. Look, if I just did what made me happy, I would be a terrible writer. I wouldn't be able to play guitar or piano. Um... I wouldn't be able to paint because a lot of those things, a lot of that self-improvement that we engage in to make us better at a thing involves a lot of frustration. So many times in so many paintings or or while I was learning to play guitar, my fingers hurt and I felt miserable because I just couldn't get it right. A lot of frustration. But why did I keep on doing it? Well, I guess I kept on doing it because I knew in the long run those things, those abilities would make me happy. But in the short term, there were months, weeks, years where what I was doing wasn't necessarily making me happy. It was like um, banging my head against a brick wall. Like Pedro says, um, what brings us happy or uh, what will eventually bring us happiness um, is usually brought out, brought about by um, 
by hard hardship. And if you're just going to do what makes you happy, then you're not going to be focusing in on, on the things that are frustrating, that um, that make you feel maybe somewhat less than whole. You know, do what makes you happy. Don't know if you're in a tough relationship. Is it a good? Um, uh, it will make you happy to leave, right? But in the short term, there's a lot of unhappiness and unrest and ups and downs. Again, I mean, it's happiness, if you want to call it that, is a spectrum, right? Do what makes you happy isn't obvious. It isn't obvious. Um, Don't be hard on yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. I'm sure we can extract something positive even from reality TV. Of course we can. It's awesome. (laughs) It's just Pedro. Um, AI can't um, teach us unless someone programs it to do so. AI will never have initiative. Of course, we make wrong choices. We are human. It's the way we learn. But by that standard, this is from Min. By that standard, most advice is useless because humans actually need a written out manual. Eat healthy meals. Exercise enough. Um, Min, look online. <laughs> you've just kind of, you've just kind of um, highlighted about 60% of internet uh, content. Eat healthy meals and exercise enough. <laughs> <laughs> just throw a pawn in the mix and you've pretty much invented the internet yeah of course we need things written out and to be obvious we need to hear things that we already know you know that's what it is to be human well, quite often when you ask advice you're never asking advice because you don't know the answer you're asking for confirmation of what you already feel and think don't do what makes you happy it's a terrible piece of advice do what is most productive Do what's best in the long run. Suffer now and save later. Those are productive pieces of advice. Do what makes you happy is just reductive self-help nonsense. It really is. And I won't have my mind changed even by the 62% of you that said. (laughs) We all know you love to argue. (laughs) Um, be Be happy being. Um, not being, uh, not for um, self-help, says uh, The Bridge. You say squirrels can just be, but we've noticed depression, angst, and trauma in loads of animals. Maybe simple-minded insects don't struggle like that, but it seems most animals have enough intelligence to be able to suffer mentally. Welcome to the club, chipmunks. <laughs> How about just trying to avoid bad or sad moments? I, I think that's bad advice as well. Why do we negate? Why do we... Oh, God, I'm, I'm going to go on a rant now and we're going to miss the um, <laughs> the sections. But I, I'm, I'm here for it. Look, why would we? Why should we avoid bad and sad moments? Why do we tend to... Um, why do we tend to favor happiness, joy? And, like, why do we favor those emotions over, over the bad emotions? I'll tell you why, because they feel better. They're more instantly gratifying, right? We can, it, they're better, more pleasant to think about. But let me tell you something. Um, a, 99% of the advances I've made in my life have not been because I've been in a great moment. There is so much learning to be done from sadness. So much motivation to be found in anger or, or envy. The way we paint... Um, uh, let's call it the negative spectrum of emotions for me is just unhealthy it's just unhealthy and weird it's like negating a whole section of yourself guys if you're one of these people who who are that like let's be positive Carl Jung and um, uh, the dark part of yourself just read some Carl Jung man because everything everything about you is you not just those happy joyful moments Let's continue. Did Rob just tell a story and now he decided to go for long-term happiness over instant gratification? Almost as if his argument that humans can't decide to go for long-term happiness over instant gratification is not an argument he believes in himself. I mean... No, but here's the thing. Like, I could have never gotten any better at guitar. and eventually did. I could have never gotten any better at painting, but I eventually did. Why? Because I didn't give up on something that wasn't bringing me happiness. How many people have I have I met 
that well, I want so badly to paint. Can you che- teach me? I'm like, yeah, I can teach you. Paint a thousand paintings. <laughs> paint a thousand bad paintings. That's how you learn how to paint. And, you know, after painting number two, they stop. It doesn't make me happy. Well, you know. You know, happiness um, Happiness is is um, uh, is a mirage. You know when you're driving on a hot road and you see the water in the distance, that mirage? That's happiness, man. You're going to be, if you want to chase happiness, you're going to be, it's a lifelong pursuit that will take you nowhere. Nowhere. Um, Rob, you need a bigger screen. You read words that aren't written. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. The screen is actually quite far away from me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, Rob, I like to argue, too. I know that of you, Min. Uh, Chusky, um, you don't need to eat rotten food to enjoy ice cream. Um, no, you don't. But rotten food, like, that's an unfair comparison. Um, uh, although I understand I understand the meaning, Chusky, and it's, um, it's not a bad point. I'm not saying... Um, I'm not saying you can compare all the emotions. What I'm saying is that negative emotions, for me are very, very useful, you know. I learned a lot of humility. When my friends died, well, we're talking about six, seven years ago, I lost my best friend and, you know, my Spanish mum or my mum in Spain within a month of each other. That grief, um, that grief changed me fundamentally. Um, made me um, uh, Made me a lot more health conscious, made me a lot more humble, made me realise... Um, how how poorly I, were, I I treated my my own body and my own and how socially I was kind of inept at that time. I don't know. A lot of positivity came from that negative emotion. A lot of my impetus to do creative projects comes from um, is fueled by some kind of a negative emotion. I don't know. I feel, I feel like in society we pursue happiness. We pursue all these things that just no more or less real than the negative spectrum of emotions that can be very incredibly useful. You may not have followed me there, Rob. Um, hang on. I mean, being ha- um, being happy being. I had a spell away. Yeah, I know what you mean. Be be happy being exactly. You know, happiness. I don't even think. I'm not even sure it's a real thing. You don't go on holiday to pursue happiness. The, when you go on holiday, Natch, you go to escape your your life, right? That's why I go on holiday. And you escape your life. Once you have escaped all the shit in your life, you end up in a place of tranquility, right? Something you might even describe as happiness. So if happiness is avoiding, is, is escaping our problems... <laughs> maybe we should all take the advice, right? Do what makes you happy. We'll all be unemployed, poor people, living on the streets. <laughs> and it's happy. It's naive. I find it naive. Just do what makes you happy. Okay, let's continue. I'm being really... Um, uh, I, I, I'm encouraging people to talk, Natch, by uh, by being an ar- argumentative today. It's doing me the world of good. I'm f- my grumpiness is feeling satisfied. Um, Rob, you're spot on with the so-called bad emotions. They're all part of happiness. They're um, very much aligned with Jessica today. Very mindful. Thank you. Oh, wow. Am I aligned with Jessica? Oh, you're all beautiful. You're beautiful snowflakes and butterflies. (laughs) Love and light. (laughs) I was happy while learning guitar, even if it was hard. I was doing what I wanted to do, says Trusky. Maybe happiness is the um, is in the pursuit, not in the destination. Yeah, maybe. Um, better advice would be do what you feel like doing. Oof, I would say that's bad advice too. <laughs> but anyway, you know what we're gonna do, guys? Oh man, what do we do, Natch? Let's just let's just do a hundred humans. Go on. Sorry, friends. It's a bit of a strange show today. I got carried away with the conversation. What am I supposed to do? So we're going to go to 100 humans. We may have to leave today's complete the news for tomorrow. My bad. Sorry, guys. Okay, so here we go. It was a long walk to work today, friends, across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys. And on that walk, I encountered 100 humans. And I asked them to name something they would hate for their date 
to be allergic to. So you're going out on a date and you're trying to think of an activity or a thing or maybe you want to bring come with a gift. I don't know. A date. It's been a long time since I've had one match. I don't know how they work. So name something you'd hate for your date, for your, for your potential partner to be allergic to. I asked them that question. They gave me their answers. I have the top seven answers here. Your job in the chat is to identify those top seven answers. All right. What do you reckon, Natch? Uh, food in general. Do I have to specify? Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, okay. look, if someone's allergic to food, they're not going to yeah. make it to the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say... Uh, Can I give you a clue? to pasta, for example. Allergic to pasta. There you go. Now, if you, <laughs> Natch is taking you to Tony Romas. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's not there. Sorry. <clears throat> In fact, I will tell you, there is a kind of food there, but it's not pasta. It's more the kind of food you might gift someone before a date. Ooh. All right, let's see. <laughs> um, allergic to food, says Pedro. Food is, there is an item of food there, but it's a bit too broad. Um, allergic to, um, as in physically allergic to, or as in really hates doing it? The 100 humans interpreted it in both ways. Men. <laughs> Dairy, says Min. You know what, Min? Yeah, let's give him, let's give him Dairy. Because I'm seeing by the chat that this is going to take forever. <laughs> Dairy wasn't there, but chocolate was. Chocolate was there. So, and it's the, what number answer? It's the fifth most popular answer. With 10 of 100 humans saying they'd hate for their date to be allergic to chocolate. Um, Pedro and Min have the same answer. Pedro says sex. And Min says nuts. <laughs> ah, wait, I think he means nuts as in nueces. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Guys, neither one of those are there. You're quite grumpy today, says Urs. <laughs> I'm not going on holidays to escape from my life, but for making some memories and having a good time with my family. Uh, job prov provides that kind of opportunity. Yeah, I am grumpy today, Urs. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to be J. I'm going to be me with you. I'm not going to kind of put on an act. I'm a grumpy monkey today. Tomorrow I'll be better. Um, watching, a mo allergic to movies. Guys, no, it's not there. Okay, I'm going to, Natch, you and I, we're going to work with each other a little bit. We're going to knock a few of these off. Okay. You yeah, know, you go out on a date, um, and you need some kind of, um, uh, you need some help presenting the best, most confident part of yourself. You don't want to be nervous. Mm, or maybe you go for dinner, and accompanying the dinner, you drink something that would ha maybe help. Um, lubricate the conversation. What am I talking about, Natch? Alcohol. Alcohol! There you go. You'd hate for your date to be allergic to alcohol. <laughs> because these guys are taking it like... Min's just said condoms. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how Min is dating. I want to be in that dating pool. <laughs> Yeah, well done. Um, it's not there. I'm sorry. Nor is physical touch. Um, Pedro says wine. Wine isn't there either. Wine isn't there either. Sunlight, says Pedro. Sunlight. You'd hate for your date to be allergic to sunlight. You're in Transylvania. <laughs> Girl appears at the dark, um, in a dark corner of a bar. <laughs> You'd hate for a date to be allergic to sunlight. Is it there? No, it's not. Sorry, guys. Okay, Natch, me and you, we're going to work on it again. We need to help. We need to help the, the guys in the chat. Okay, this is a physical touch, but with a very specific part of your body. Not something I believe you can be allergic to, but, you know, it would be a bummer if a date was allergic to this. Min says sex. A bunch of people have said sex. 
Vin said condoms. I think it was just um, uh, Pedro said sex, allergic to sex. We're talking about a date. First date, guys. Imagine it's a first date. You're not going to expect sex, but maybe you expect something else, right, Natch? What am I talking about? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, this activity is not only shared between potential lovers, but, you know, um, a mother and a son. Yeah, dude. Kisses. Like Kisses! <laughs> That's a well, well done. All right. Cheese, man. <laughs> well done, um, Pedro. I've got kiss as well. I didn't say sex. It's just kidding. No, no. It was... Uh, <laughs> it was... Um, I think it was Pedro. Okay. Ur says flowers. You'd hate for your date to be allergic to flowers. It's there. Well done, Urs. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Urs. With 26 of 100 humans, it's the number one answer. Congratulations. Killing it. All right, you guys have only got another three to get. All right, you want to, you know, you don't only want to look your best, Natch, when you're out on a date. You want to smell your best. You know, you want to, you want to smell like freshly laundered clothes. And perhaps you'd add something to your, um, to your body. You dab something around your body. To make you smell, to make smell good. What do you think that would be? Perfume. Perfume. Well done. <laughs> Chusky got perfume as well. Minnie's just having fun in his own there. He says heroin. <laughs> okay, I'm going to very quickly go down the list. We had alcohol. You got that one. Kissing. You got that one. Chocolate. Dinner. I could have given you food dinner, I guess. You don't want them to be allergic to dinner. You don't want them to be allergic to you. That was in third place. Second place was perfume and cologne. And in first place was flowers. Well done, guys. Sorry we didn't have very much time today. I got carried away with my arguing. But you know what, guys? I've got nothing but love for you. We've got a great week of shows coming up this week. Guys, so many things you could have been doing today. But instead of doing those things, you decided to take the time to spend some time with Natch and I. And it means the absolute world. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>